Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody we are going to talk today about uh, vaccine mostly and before that we are going to talk about active and passive immunity what does it mean and uh, and also the vaccine so it will be, uh, throughout this lecture and coming few lectures we are going to go back and forth between different uh, aspects of uh, vaccine because all are highly related i mean you cannot separate completely like we will, we are going to go back and forth between vaccination passive immunity active immunity okay and as usual like uh, this uh, lecture also contains some of the images from genoese immunobiology book which is copyrighted and main topic uh, that now we are going to talk about the active immunity and passive immunity what is active immunity active immunity means when our immune system gets some infection and in response to the infection when it elicits the immune response to fight against it then it is the active immunity okay so this active immunity can be i mean it can happen in our immune system can respond either the natural or real infection or if we deliberately inject something which is pathogenic or antigenic rather immunogenic then it will also uh, response to it and elicit the immune response and this both are active immunity and this two immunity what is the difference one you will have the disease and another when we deliberately uh, incorporating something that most of the time it is not going to activate the disease and that is vaccination okay that is the vaccination or immunization and what is passive immunity passive immunity is when the immune response happen in some other places either i mean we we can say um, some other organism or animal or human is already infected with some disease and we isolate the blood or antibody from that uh, individuals and give it to someone to cure for some other symptoms or the disease okay so the or immunity was active in some other organism or in human being and we are taking the help of that active immune system we are purifying the antibody molecule and injecting or the serum of that infected person and giving to the in, uh, uh, another individual to protect from other protect from that particular disease is called passive immunity it may be natural it may be artificial so we'll discuss later on what is passive immunity so first let's discuss active immunity that the and what is the vaccine and vaccination active immunity actually we discussed till last lecture what happened what are the components how immune system reacts that was active immunity but major purpose of this or today's lecture active immunity means we are going to talk about vaccine okay vaccine is inducing the active immunity what is vaccine it is much easier to say what is vaccination than vaccine vaccine is nothing but antigen or immunogen okay which we are going to forcefully or deliberately introduce or administer to an individual to raise the immune system i am repeating again so vaccine or vaccine candidate is basically the antigen or immunogen we deliberately administered into an organism or an an, an an individual to raise the immune response so that it can fight in future against that disease if it happens really or in reality okay so it is the immunization material like by which we immunize so vaccine can be of two types one is called prophylactic another is therapeutic prophylactic means to prevent 
or ameliorate the effects of the future infection by natural or weak pathogen. Okay. That means, we are priming the individual with vaccine, so that our immune system can see what is that, remember it, you know the memory B cell and T cell, they will stay inside the body. So, next time if infection happen or the secondary infection, it will act faster or much quicker way than the primary infection. So, that is the part or the purpose of the vaccination and this is prophylactic and what is therapeutic which is already to fight against an existing disease. Okay. Th that means, the cancer is already there. So, it is not that it will happen and we can uh, vaccinate that okay, someone will have cancer, it is normally we do not do that. So, if someone is having cancer, then we induce the immune system with certain antigen or vaccine candidate, so that immune system specifically can uh, help or treat or cure the cancer better, it is in addition to the other uh, treatment of cancer. Okay. So, these vaccine candidate we have to understand, we have to purify and once, once it is done and then we have to use it and the use of vaccine is called vaccination and we are going back to the first lecture. Okay. I started that immune immunology or modern immunology started with I mean if you go back to the history, we started with Edward Jenner. Today almost last part of the course, we are coming back again to Edward Jenner and Louis Pasteur, because they discover vaccine against smallpox and chicken cholera, the almost 100 years gap. Okay. And the vaccination term was proposed by uh, Edward Jenner, because Bhakka means cow. So, he used the cowpox uh, virus to do the immunization for smallpox. So, he named vaccination, but in 1881 Louis Pasteur just to honor Edward Jenner, he just said like or convinced the people that this term should be continued and still today we are using the term vaccination. Vaccination means injecting or administration of vaccine candidate to an individual which can protect us from future infection. Okay. There are varieties or various type of vaccine, okay. we will go slowly, they are if you see that attenuated, inactivated, toxoid, subunit vaccine, conjugate vaccine, heterotypic vaccine and there are a series of experimental experimental means it is not a type of vaccine actually, it is the different types of vaccine which is now under experiment is going on. So, it is not yet finalized, so people are trying to develop a new kind of vaccine and there is another type of vaccine called valence. Okay. So, what is attenuated vaccine? Attenuated vaccine is some organism live, whole organism live but attenuated means they lost its infectivity or the virulence, they cannot cause disease anymore. Okay. What are the example like measles, mumps, rubella vaccine okay. and this is in short called MMR, measles, mumps and rubella. Okay. Inactivated means when we it inactivated again can be the whole organism, we killed it by some means we can use some chemicals to kill the whole organism or we can um, heat inactivated right you just if you heat any organism up to start after certain temperature they will die. So, dead organism either chemically or by heat if you make them. So, it is not going to lose its um, immunogenic activity it because the surface protein if you see any organism if you uh, heat them they will die, but the surface protein of that organism may be denatured, but it will remain there. Denaturation is not a problem because denaturation is not going to lose its epitope character. Conformational epitope will go away, but the linear epitope if you, uh, you have to go uh, back and remember what is linear and what is conformational epitope. So, linear epitope will remain intact and that is going to serve as the antigen and elicit the immune response. Okay. So, 
whole organism initially was life, but lost its pathogenicity or the virulence. Second one is the whole organism, uh, but he inactivated means they are dead, they cannot do anything, okay? but it is not degraded or something. Toxoid, what is toxoid? Because there are many bacteria, you know, like um, tetanus, clostridium, cholera, diphtheria. So, they produce a exotoxin. Exotoxin means you have to go little bit my, um, uh, go back to your microbiology course. Hope you studied that bacteria secret some protein molecules as a toxin, and these toxin go and bind. So, I one if I remember correctly in one lecture I told something about that. So, that toxin go and binds to our cell the target cell and then make damage. Different toxin has different activity right. Uh, I already told tetanus toxin, cholera toxin. So, these toxin if you inject directly what will happen? The toxin whether bacteria secretes inside the body or if it is a purified toxin it will be more dangerous right. So, it will act on our cell and immediately severe situation will come. So, what we do or the scientists started, they take the toxin molecule or the protein, they heat denatured it. So, what will happen? That protein will be denatured. Okay. So, it will not going to act as toxin molecule anymore, but their epitope will remain intact. So, that is called toxoid. So, heat inactivated toxoid, mostly you see the tetanus and diphtheria. Okay. So, tetanus and diphtheria we use toxoid because the toxin directly we cannot use it will kill. The fourth is subunit vaccine. Subunit vaccine is not very old discovery normally the hepatitis virus vaccine is the subunit vaccine. What happened in uh, like in every virus you know that there are. So, if this is the virus molecule there are some certain surface molecular here right. So, what is going to happen either you inject the attenuated hepatitis B okay, hepatitis virus or you use the inactivated hepatitis virus. So, either attenuated or inactivated both virus is possible, but there are always a chance for the attenuated virus to come back and gain the virulency. Okay. So, what happened? it was found that immunity against this hepatitis virus was mostly against the surface protein okay? against the surface protein by antibody mostly. So, uh, what happened the scientists purify this surface protein separately and injected the surface protein alone and it was found that itself I mean the surface protein alone can uh, be used as vaccination that means, if you inject the surface protein into an individual and after that if hepatitis B infection happen in real life that individual can protect. Okay. So, gradually it is uh, improved. So, initially it was a whole protein, a whole protein cannot be epitope or whole protein cannot um, we do not need because antibody will not bind the whole protein antibody may bind here certain region this epitope may have this epitope. Okay. So, what can be done? So, if this is the protein and if suppose this is the gene you can instead of the whole protein you can make a construct a truncated version of the protein also you can um, express in heterologous system like you can express in yeast, you can express in bacteria, animal system. Okay. So, this part you express and the truncated protein which is actually having both the epitopes epitope 1 and epitope 2 you can use for the vaccination. This is the subunit many many proteins you know there are multiple subunit alpha, beta, gamma suppose only alpha is enough. So, you do not have to make all the proteins. So, only alpha subunit you express purify then you inject okay. that is called subunit vaccine. <coughs> So, hepatitis, um, hepatitis virus is the first virus which is uh, the subunit vaccine was used and discovered. Then it is coming the conjugate vaccine. Okay. 
then conjugate vaccine is coming. What is conjugate vaccine? It is Haemophilus influenza B, meningitis, pneumococcal, these are the uh, bacteria which has a lipopolysaccharide on their surface. Okay. So, if you want to kill them or if you want to uh, um, neutralize them or stop their activity, what we have to do? We have to have antibody against this polysaccharide molecule. Okay, but it is not, I mean we know the T cell cannot process the polysaccharide, okay. T cell cannot process the polysaccharide. So, we have to think something else, so that B cell will produce antibody against the polysaccharide, but T cell will something, will see something. So, that is a mixture of protein and polysaccharide, we will show uh, come later, that is called conjugate, conjugate vaccine, okay. Then heterotypic vaccine, heterotypic vaccine means when you are giving, when you are giving pathogens from other animals, okay. that was how the vaccine or immunization first discovered. If you remember the Jenner, he used the cowpox virus to treat human pathogen smallpox virus. This was a heterotypic, so pathogens of other animals that either do not cause disease in human or that particular organism or cause mild disease like pox we just um, I just told you and the BCG. Okay. This is the vaccine for mycobacterium tuberculosis. It was very effective in certain country, it is not at all effective in certain country for some reason. So, new uh, discovery or new experimentation and going on because BCG was very good one separate it was very good protector for the child particularly child TB. Okay. Experimental I will come later but before that experimental has a separate or variety of things okay dendritic cell vaccines so what people are doing people are injecting dendritic cells along with the vaccine candidate so that the presentation of antigen will be better people are trying the dna vaccine so instead of giving the protein injecting the dna directly so that the tissue will produce the protein and or body will produce the protein and uh, our immune system will see that this protein is foreign. So, you do not have to I mean this much easier because uh, preparation of DNA is much cheaper with respect to protein and less um, uh, problematic because protein has a lot of problem. If you want to isolate protein or purify protein or express protein it is not that simple or straightforward in books or in board. Uh, I mean if I have a blackboard now in front of me, in 5 minutes I can clone a gene, I can express a protein, I can purify it 5 to 10 minutes, but it may take years okay, just to clone and express a protein and get a pure protein in its form. So, in with respect to that working with DNA is much more simpler. Okay. So, isolation and purification of DNA is ok. So, people thought or the scientists rather scientists thought that if you inject the DNA directly to the uh, individual that a particular individual can make uh, protein from that DNA because cell has the capability. So, what we have to do we have to inject the DNA in such a way that DNA goes to nucleus, nucleus of our own cell. Okay. So, if this our cell if you inject the DNA if it enters into the cell nucleus cell will uh, try to express it and what you need to express you need a promoter right you need a promoter and your gene of interest that gene means whatever you want to clone and a 3 prime poly signal okay this is poly signal and normally these promoters should be animal promoter or animal virus promoter normally we do cytomegalovirus promoter okay cmb promoter so we make a plasmid and the gene of interest X, whatever disease or the surface receptor or the target protein you would like to do, clone it, make a construct, isolate the DNA, inject it, and cytomegalovirus promoter, our transcription system or human transcription system can and I mean nicely utilize it and can transcript. So, what will happen? There will be first mRNA, and from that mRNA, after transcript, the protein will form, and that protein even if it is a cell protein it is internal protein it will be 
presented by MHC1 and immune system will find it new because it was not our own protein. So, that is how DNA vaccine works. T cell receptor peptide vaccines it is also a new one. So, new chimeric receptor is making and T cell receptor for a particular vaccine is injected with the vaccine. So, that the presentation or the recognition of T cell activation will be much easier. Okay. Targeting of identified bacterial protein. So, if you know that this uh, say first one thing we have to understand to understand the um, vaccine like once we would like to neutralize or kill say in case of virus we have to neutralize the virus. So, that it cannot bind to the target cell and do the damage or we have to activate the immune system the cytotoxic T cells in such a way. So, that it can easily kill the virus infected cell at the primary level. So, that the spreading of virus will be much less or cannot harm the disease because for every disease or the manifestation of the disease you need certain number like one cholera uh, vibrio cholerae or bacteria which cause cholera cannot do cholera. You need the vibrio cholerae to grow in certain number then it will start create problem or we can see the manifestation of the disease. Similarly, virus also few numbers cannot make much harm. So, in that level when the number is very little if the immune system can block them or stop them or kill them what will happen. So, they will um, they cannot progress. So, for that uh, if you can identify uh, for that what you have to do actually you have to know exactly how virus is working how they are replicating. So, their biology and which part of that virus will be highly immunogenic which part of that virus or bacteria not only immunogenic if you block it then your clearance or effective immunity will be better. So, that research is parallel. So, you have to understand that biology and the immunology first and after you identify then what you can do is that particular protein you can over express. Okay. We can over express actually I thought I will tell it later, but now over express is like what I said in uh, BCG okay, it is not working. Now, the protein which is actually helping to improve the immunity if you over express that particular protein in that bacteria and now inject what will happen initially suppose the bacteria has 10 molecule here and there. Okay. 10 or 8 or 9 whatever it is. Now, whatever you recombinantly express this protein here inside and increase this number in much more. So, what will happen that will make the immune system much more active much more efficient okay. that that way also you can improve and that is going on in particularly BCG actually okay. people are trying to do that okay. that I will I mean if my time some I will come again. Okay. And then valence. Okay. So, what is this uh, sorry what is this valence? Valence is if you want to use the vaccine or make vaccine say um, uh, there are two or three variety of one organism all cause disease some are mild some. So, you mix them together it may be same uh, human virus or um, uh, human pathogen or from heterotypic like two three different strain. So, you mix them together and inject as a vaccine. So, many times what happen it gives better protection okay. it gives better protection. So, instead of only one whole or attenuated or inactivated we are injecting two three different stains okay. and that is very I mean uh, uh, in case of influenza you might have heard like H 1 N 1 H 1 N 2 H 1 N 6 what is that that means their uh, surface markers are different. Okay, different variety. So, instead of giving one if you are making a vaccine which can handle three different type of influenza virus that will be better or more effective because they are changing I do not know which one is going to infect right. So, um, I mean if, if I say the both way you can do this one is vaccination another is a natural infection. Okay. Infection also will do the same thing if someone have is having influenza of a particular strain our body immune system will act be activated and if same influenza virus infect again what will happen that will give the protection. This is one way other is the vaccine. So, you do I do not have influenza 
but I took the influenza vaccine. Immunized or priming the immune system so that in future if influenza virus attack body can take care of that. Both will do almost similar thing slight definitely slight differences are there that I will come if, um, uh, while uh, saying that what is the difference between attenuated and inactivated virus I mean uh, vaccine. So, but what I will prefer I think all of you will prefer I will not prefer the disease okay. if without having disease but the result I am getting the same okay, then I will definitely prefer the vaccination and it is happening like that. Okay. So, that is why whole world world health organization everybody is trying to develop or generate vaccine. So, that instead of having the disease and gaining the immunity we should have it beforehand. And to do this vaccination along with the vaccine candidate we need something else also. Okay. So, only protein if you inject into an animal or say an individual a human many times many times itself particularly it happened particularly it happened when we are going the toxoid subunit vaccine that means pure protein we are giving okay not the whole cell that is not normally this is not the problem for this attenuated and some cases inactivated vaccine also need that okay so this toxoid subunit vaccine and some cases in um, this inactivated vaccine they cannot work by themselves they cannot activate the immune system by themselves alone. So, then what we use we use adjuvant okay. and definitely you know what is the purpose of preservative. Preservative we use in many many different places like in food any for long storage food in pickles whatever we are buying from the market we add preservative because preservative can protect the material or the uh, thing from bacterial and fungal infection. So, vaccine what will happen it is not possible like okay, I will make vaccine in this hand and in the other hand I am going to inject to the patient or the individuals. So, some companies producing vaccines they are storing the, it has just like a biomolecules it sells attenuated live or um, heat inactivated or inactivated cells or a protein everybody has a self life. Okay. We have to keep it. So, it is not from production immediately we are producing. So, so company or a industry is making it if, even if you are making in the lab it has certain life. So, if you want to keep them for long time which is one of the ma major challenge for uh, vaccine production and use of vaccine or immunization procedure like the storage of vaccine. So, for storage you need to add some preservative so that it lasts long okay. it self life will be more so that we can use it for long time automatically the, uh, the cost will be if you can store them for long time ultimately cost will be less. Okay. So, what is adjuvant? Adjuvant is let me go back adjuvant is the material or chemicals we are adding with the so you have say antigen here we have antigen which alone may not uh, elicit the immune response that much okay. and this and you need something which will add some immunity more or if you remember the super antigen that time I told. So, along with the antigen we mix it so that it boosts the immune system in general. Okay. So, adjuvant are like that there are varieties of adjuvants are there, okay. but in human we normally use this aluminum salts okay aluminum salts called alum that i will i'll repeat it again okay so what happened so i will come in adjuvant later so before that just while discussing what is vaccine when we are producing vaccine there are many other material because i said varieties of different type of vaccine so when we see the vaccine in a vial before injection or oral administration whatever it may contain many things right Ad adjuvant we have purposefully we add in many times okay we have to add, some cases we have to add antibiotics purpose you know just to protect from the vaccine vaccine to protect from growth of bacteria okay and storage of the vaccine egg protein egg protein is present in case of influenza and yellow virus because while making the virus 
attenuated, so they are grown in egg cells. Okay, so in within the egg they used to grow. So when you purify the vaccine candidate, there is a possibility some egg proteins, okay, may be there. Okay, so it may contain. So why I'm telling formaldehyde is used. That is the chemical to add uh, data uh, to make the toxoid. So when you make a protein denatured, either you heat inactivate it or add some chemicals. Normally we use formaldehyde to inactivate the bacterial products or the toxins. Okay, monosodium glutamate is MSG. You know that is a preservative or the stabilizer. Okay, and there is another uh, thing thiomarsal which is not very used because uh, uh, not very much used anymore because of the mercury containing antimicrobial. Ultimate goal of all this thing while production of the vaccine is I protect from virus and bacterial um, growth in the because protein you are making a protein solution which is very nice culture bacteria can grow happily. So, we have to stop them. So, we give them adjuvant to activate the immune system or elicit the immune response little higher or much more efficient way. So, that only antigen or the vaccine may not do that um, job properly or completely. Okay. So, these are the few things what you may have within the vaccine. Okay. So, what will happen I, I will stop here now, but this thing I will continue as if it is it is not possible to continue I mean complete this in one uh, half an hour lecture. So, I will continue this with the next lecture. Okay. See you.